Hello, in this tutorial we are going to learn how to get an attribute from a parsed XML document using the ASP32 and Arduino core. As target board I'm going to be using an ASP32 Firebeetle board from DFRobot. So the first thing we are going to do is including the tiny XML tool library, the one that we have been covering before, so we have access to all the functionality we need uh, both to parse the XML document and then to be able to manipulate it. We are going also to, to indicate here the using of the tiny XML uh, to namespace. So every time we want to use um, some, some class or some method from this namespace, we don't need to use the scope resolution operator. Then uh, we are going to define here a string uh, with a very simple XML document, as you can see here. It has a root element and then it has a nested element uh, with some, some content here. And then it has an attribute that basically contains, uh, contains the number 10. So this is going to be the document that we are going to, to parse. And then our objective is to get here this value, uh, the value of this attribute, which is called ATT, just for uh, illustration purposes, but it obviously could be called uh, something else. So moving on to our setup function, as usual, we start by opening a serial connection. So later we can output the results of our program. And then we are going to declare an object of class XML document. Uh, that is uh, our starting point uh, that we use in order to parse the document. Then, uh, like we did in the previous tutorial, we are going to call this parse method here, passing as input the string containing the, the XML document, and we are going to do here an error checking uh, to check if the result of this procedure is equal to XML underscore success, because if not, there was an error parsing the XML and there's no point in continuing, uh, so we basically return. Then, assuming that everything was right, the first thing we are going to do uh, is obtaining uh, the root element, okay? So we can do this with a call to the first child uh, method on our XML document. And as you can see here, we receive a pointer to an XML node uh, that basically is representing the root of our, uh, of our document. Nonetheless, as we, we can see here, basically the attribute we want to obtain is in this nested element, okay, which by simplicity we also call the element, but again, it could be called anything else. But so now that we have the root, we need to navigate through to this element to later be able to, to, um, to obtain its attribute. So it's very simple to do that from the root. Uh, we simply need to call the first child element method. Don't forget that we have a pointer, so we need to use this operator, operator here in order to be able to call um, this method. And then as input, we pass a string with the name of the element uh, we want to obtain. And as output, uh, we are going to obtain a pointer to an XML element uh, that should be representing uh, this element here. So, uh, moving on, uh, as, uh, as we've seen before, our attribute uh, is an integer. So we are going to start, as we'll see below, uh, we'll need uh, a variable of int type for us to be able to extract uh, this attribute. So we start by declare the, declaring here uh, an integer variable. We'll call it for simplicity attribute. And then we are going to take care of obtaining this, uh, this attribute, the value of this attribute. In order to do that, we simply need to call this query int attribute method on our XML element. Again, don't forget that we have a pointer to that element, so we need to use this operator here. And then, as input of this query int attribute uh, method, the first thing we pass uh, is the name of the attribute we want to obtain. Okay, don't forget it is called ATT. And then we'll pass uh, the address of our integer variable. So this method will place here uh, the value of the, the, the attribute. So we can use this operator uh, under the assumption that, is, uh, that our uh, attribute is parsable to an integer. Uh, if not, instead of XML success, we'll get a, a different value. We'll get a, an error value indicating that um, the conversion to an integer could not be performed. Uh, there's also the case where the attribute doesn't exist. Uh, in that case, this is modeled using another error code. Uh, but I'll leave the in the in the uh, description below. I'll leave the link to the documentation about this method, and you can see in more detail all the error codes that are available when we call it. And obviously, for a real application scenario, we need to consider them. Here, we are just doing a very simple approximation where we are checking uh, if it is not successful or not the the, um, the querying of this attribute. But in a real application scenario, we should have more uh, error checking and act accordingly.
naturally if uh, there's there is some error we are just printing a message indicating indicating that we could not obtain the attribute and returning but we could have a, a more a more complex error checking to understand what was the actual error so assuming that everything went well we should have our integer value here in this attribute variable uh, it should be 10 like we like we can just to recap like we can see here it has a value 10 this attribute so it should be what we obtain in this variable and to finalize we are going to print the value of this attribute to the to the serial port to make sure that uh, the parsing of the document was successful and also that we have been able to obtain the attribute we wanted so I've already uploaded the code to my sp32 I'm going to open here the serial monitor okay as you can see, it's already printed, but let me just reset it. Okay, and as you can see here, it's precisely what we obtained, uh, the value 10 as expected. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Hope you have enjoyed.